higher education. It's commonly understood as university or college education that includes master's and PhD degrees. It also includes professional schools, teacher training schools, institutes of technology, community colleges, and other types of institutions or organizations. But is that it? Philip Altbach, an American author, researcher, former professor, and the founding director of the Center for International Higher Education at Boston College, described higher or tertiary education as the most important institution in the complex process of knowledge creation and distribution. He further explains that it not only serves as home to most of the basic sciences, but also to the complex system of journals, books, and databases in an ever-growing number of specializations. Knowledge creation and distribution led to civilization underlying this and this. And the system of journals, books, and databases is an important part of getting there. Higher education is a multifaceted institution. As a whole, it involves the individual student or academic level, the level of courses or group of students and their teachers, the department level, including centers or groups of academics and students, the level of institutions like universities and colleges, the regional level, and the international level. Each of these levels has different considerations. On the international level, for example, a subfield called comparative higher education addresses the complex relationship between universities in different parts of the world. This subfield emerged partly as a result of a phenomenon called the internationalization of higher education. At the beginning of the 21st century, many anticipated that neoliberal globalization would increase global circulation of talent, internationalize cooperation, and weaken national borders. Things changed since the start of the century, and the trajectory of where things are going seems different, especially after the global COVID-19 pandemic. However, the internationalization of higher education is still a relevant topic among higher education researchers. In comparative higher education, we see that different countries have different higher education systems, which is affected and affects society and culture. In the US, for example, the higher education system is unique due to the high level of decentralization. While being embedded in their societies, global higher ed systems and institutions share a historical root. Universities were established in the medieval period to transmit knowledge and provide training for a few key professions. In the 19th century, universities became creators of new knowledge through basic research. In a book called The Idea of the University, Carl Jasper considered that the modern university had four main functions – research, teaching, professional education, and the transmission of a particular kind of culture. It's important to distinguish the difference between the modern university and what universities used to be. In the 1990s, higher education started becoming more important because of something called the massification of higher education. The 1960s saw an exceptional expansion of higher education across the Western world. And with it came student movements in the late 60s. The massification of higher education, marketization, or sometimes even called McDonaldization of higher education, is the growth of the higher ed system worldwide for higher participation. In the last few decades, countries have witnessed a move from a reliance on an elite system of higher education involving only a small minority of the population to a mass system in which the assumption is that most people will participate. However, this notion affects entire systems in the form of institutional stratification. When searching for articles online on the massification of higher education, many of the articles that come up point out challenges caused by massification in many parts of the world. 
This combination of marketization and stratification has increasingly led to this transformation of higher education from a public good to a private good. This is also where we see the rise of the private sector. Behind this trend of increasing importance to higher education and massification lies also the rise of the so-called knowledge economy. That's tech development, globalization, internationalization. So how does higher education address these topics? It seems that there's a lot involved in understanding higher education as an institution. It is also a growing institution, both by its social outcomes and by the number of people involved in it. In any estimation then, higher education is big business. It is a major institution in modern society. And yet, for all its size, its costs, and the increasing concern over its performance, there is very little attempt to stand back and ask, in any serious way, what it is all for. Our view of higher education may be ideologically contaminated. Those are the words of Ronald Barnett, who, along with others, believes that there is a crisis in the way in which we understand higher education. Indeed, there hadn't been a framework to talk about and understand higher education educationally. Therefore, in his book, Barnett identified six elements that form the framework of an educational inquiry into higher education. However, researching higher education scientifically is relatively recent. Some scholars think that perhaps because of this, the field of higher education research may seem a bit disorganized and a little unclear. What do you think? Is the field of higher education research messy? Or do certain methods help frame our understanding of the institution? And despite its rise and historical significance, what is different about it today? With the availability of the Internet of Things and the information online, is college still worth it? If you're intrigued, stay tuned as my next video will address that question.